Welcome to Lifespan News, your source for longevity science updates. I'm your host, Brent Nally. If you missed our last episode, then you can watch it by clicking the card above. We encourage you to check the description below for links to these stories. Lifespan News is part of the Life X10 Show, or X10 for short, and both are moving to X10's YouTube channel soon. We encourage you to subscribe to X10's YouTube channel by clicking the card above. You can also find a link in the description below. Once you're subscribed, be sure to click the notification bell and select all notifications to ensure you don't miss any videos. For our first story, The Lancet has launched The Lancet Healthy Longevity, an open access journal focusing on longevity and healthy aging research and review. The Lancet was founded in 1823 by Thomas Wakeley, an English surgeon. The Lancet is a weekly peer-reviewed general medical journal which is among the world's oldest and best known publishing original research articles, review articles, editorials, book reviews, correspondence, as well as news features and case reports. It's encouraging to see a major scientific journal focusing on longevity, and it's a good sign that longevity is becoming more mainstream. For our next story, researchers from the Spanish National Cancer Research Center have used CRISPR-Cas9 to cut out cancer-causing mutations in Ewing's sarcoma and chronic myeloid leukemia tumor cells. Fusion mutations are mutations that fuse two genes together. Around 20% of all cancers include fusion mutations. The researchers used CRISPR-Cas9 to make cuts in the DNA around the fusion mutation. The cell then repairs the DNA by joining together the cuts, leaving out the fusion mutation. The cancer cells die without the product of the fusion mutation. Next, the researchers will test their technique with cancers caused by other fusion mutations. The researchers also plan to test the technique's safety and efficacy to see if it could be transplanted into humans. Moving on, T-cells normally don't proliferate, which means they also don't suffer from their telomeres shortening. T-cells start to proliferate once they are activated by antigens. At that point, T-cells' telomeres start shortening. However, researchers noticed that as T-cells contacted antigen-presenting cells, their telomere length in fact increased. The researchers tested whether this was because the contact increased the expression of the telomerase enzyme which cells use to restore or lengthen their telomere length, but that wasn't the case. Likewise, the researchers ruled out a process known as alternative lengthening of telomeres. The explanation turned out to be that the T-cell telomeres lengthened by adding on telomeres from the antigen-presenting cells. The antigen-presenting cells cluster their telomeres together, pack them in a lipid vesicle, and export them to the T-cell, effectively donating them as a power-up to lengthen the life of the T-cell. New discoveries like this teach us how biology actually works. And frankly, after studying telomeres and telomerase for about the last decade, personally, I am blown away by this new research finding. In the long run, this new discovery may even have therapeutic potential. Make sure you stay subscribed to find out. For our next story, scientists managed to successfully reprogram pig fibroblast cells into neural progenitor cells. Traditional techniques are normally used by researchers on brain tissue. For example, to create miniature brain organoids to study neural pathologies. But brain tissue is harder than others to work with. In the new research, instead of extracting neural stem cells from pigs, researchers extracted a much more common cell type, fibroblasts, and converted them into induced pluripotent stem cells, or iPSCs for short, by exposing them to Yamamaka factors. The researchers then had the iPSCs differentiate into neural progenitor cells. The procedure isn't new in that it has been tried already many times on human and mouse cells, but it hasn't been tried on pigs much before, despite pigs being of interest as preclinical models. The result of this study wasn't direct brain regeneration, but still, it can help better understand the physiology and pathology of the brain, especially given the surprising similarity between human and pig physiology, which you may recall from high school anatomy. For our final story, a new analysis has revealed a core set of genes involved in aging in humans and mice. Together with a broader set of age-related genes assembled by the study, this resource will serve as a launching point for further investigations of the mechanisms behind aging and age-related diseases. 
An international team of researchers carried out multi-layer and multi-tissue analysis of aging in male mice and then built on that by comparing their findings with gene expression data from human studies. The researchers started by analyzing gene expression, DNA methylation, and three types of histone modification in the heart, liver, and quadriceps muscle of male mice of different ages. The idea was to see how these omics layers change with age. Though there were differences in how the change happens in each tissue, the researchers found that many of the genes affected by aging were involved in the same processes. Next, the researchers identified a core set of transcription factors that regulate many of these genes, and so they could be common regulators of the molecular changes associated with aging. Finally, the researchers looked at gene expression data from other human studies and found that many of these transcription factors also have age-dependent expression in humans. In fact, some of them were also associated with differences in longevity, reinforcing the notion that they act as drivers of age-related processes in humans. That's all the news for this video. There's no need to like, comment, subscribe, or share on social media because none of those things help us solve the human aging problem. I'm kidding, of course. Like, comment, share on social media, and subscribe if you're not already yet, because this really does have an impact on the greatest problem on the planet, which is human aging. The best current estimates is that aging or age-related diseases is currently killing about 110,000 people on an average day globally, out of about 150,000 people that die on an average day total. And there's many different ways that almost anybody on this planet can contribute to help us solve the human aging problem. We really appreciate it, and we look forward to seeing you in the next video, at least as healthy as you are now.